size today. And inside the Circle T, we have a great Cameron ambassador. He came in here first time, my goodness, I think he was 18 or 19 years old. Um, great player. He's won on the PGA Tour. Um, Max Homa, supporter, great putter, one of the young up and coming gentlemen of the game and proud to have him as a supporter of the Scotty Cameron putter. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to Inside the Circle T with Scotty Cameron. My name is Drew Page. Today we have with us special guest and Titleist brand ambassador, Scotty Cameron loyalist, Max Homa. Max, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Deep. I didn't know we'd ever be doing one of these interviews, so this will be fun. Well, I've been waiting this whole time to get on uh, on your podcast and whatnot, but I haven't got that invite yet, so, you know. <laughs> It's, we got a list, man. We got, we, got, we got a list, I guess. <laughs> it's all because I'm not verified on Instagram, I know. <laughs> I, I, I get, get that it. check mark. <laughs> I, gosh, I get it. Oh, man. Um, how have you been enjoying this time off? Uh, what's been going on? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, not, not a whole lot. Uh, lucky Arizona never really closed with golf, so got to practice and play quite a bit. Um you know, spent a bunch of time with my uh, my new wife and my dog. My dog, who's actually named after Scotty Cameron. Um, you know, just minding my business, trying to stay busy. Uh, it's just gotten really, really hot here, so <laughs> I'm ready to get out of here. Uh, you know, as soon as possible. Is your dog named Scotty, or is it Cameron, or both? Oh, sorry. It's Scotty. I'll call her Scotty Cameron at times. The the last name, middle name thing is up for debate, but her first name is Scotty, named after after the best putters in the world. So I uh, figured I'd shout that out. If not here, then I don't know where else I would say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure everyone will appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure you're not the only one. I'm, I bet you we have some fans out there that have, uh, that have done the same. I'm actually, why you just brought it up, I actually just got a dog. I don't have him yet, but uh, I'm pretty excited. I get him get him in about three weeks. So what kind of dog far. you get? A German short haired pointer. Nice. So I'm uh, yeah, I'm real excited about it. I uh, wish I could get him right now, but uh, another couple weeks and I'll get That's it. Awesome. So. Uh, Rob underscore eight fifty asked, "What part of your game have you been working on the most during the lockdown?" Uh, I've been working on my short game quite a bit. It's it was kind of it's been the the weak link in my game for like a year and a half. So it was actually fortunate to have some time to try some things out and you know get a lot better there, which is good. Uh, working on you know my driver, just my driving in general. Um, but for the most part, it's just been those two things. Obviously, we work on pretty much everything, but um, you know I've kind of found a system and, and I wanted to attack like the two areas I think that helped me help vault me up. So, uh, you know, that's been my main focus, but you know, in three months you kind of work on everything a lot. So uh, I feel like everybody's worked on everything. So, uh, that would probably be where my focus has been. Another fan asked, uh, Marcini nine, what drills do you use to practice putting? Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I first off use a mirror quite often, uh, to get my, you know, my eyes in the right spot, my shoulders lined up. Um, I'll use a putting arc or some sort of tool to help with with a uh, path and, and this and that. Um, I learned, you know, at Scotty Cameron with with Paul uh, Vizanko about the importance of your lines and then also just the importance of uh, having your, your putter square uh, for, you know, basically three to four total inches, two going behind it and the two going forward. Uh, so I do do some stuff like that. But then once I'm getting closer to like playing in tournaments like we are now, I'll do a a lot of three foot, six foot, nine foot drills. Um, I'll do some lag putting games that aren't so much, you know, about making the putt or anything like that, but it's just more about, um, you know, seeing how close I can get the ball to the hole. Uh, so I just try to keep it fresh. I feel like putting is one of those things you, for me, I can't do it too long. I can't just sit around putting for hours on end. It'll, you know, stiffen up my back and it becomes kind of a process of diminishing return. So I try and keep it fun, uh, keep it quick. You know, if I'm there, 30 minutes, 45 minutes for the most part, uh, just doing, making as many three footers as I can in a row or something like that. That's kind of what I'll do. I won't grind it too hard. Um, a lot of putting's feel. So 
uh, once your feels, if your feels feel good, uh, you could do some make making putt drills. And if not, you, I just go to the mechanics and, and then I call it a day on the, on the putting green. That's, those are all great tools and tips. Um, is that, you know, do you get a lot of your drills from going to the putter studio and, and meeting with Paul and Scotty or is that something you've kind of developed with your coach or, or, or what? Yeah, uh, I learned a lot. Pretty much I learned all I know about putting for the most part from the Scotty studio and from Paul. I, I was fortunate to go there in college and I just learned how important it was to have everything in line from your you know, knees up to your shoulders um, and then your eyes in the correct position. And I got to see with their cameras how much that can change your putting stroke when it's either on the good side or the bad side. So I, I've taken a lot of um, time to make sure that those things are always the same and always in line because then it, it makes it so much easier to put a good uh, stroke on the golf ball. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, I guess I didn't really work with anybody to come up with this second part. I just came up with a pretty decent system. I, putting to me has become a lot more simple than it used to be. Um, I, I really just grind making sure my path and my stroke is good and that the, you know, for me, my face is normally very square. So as long as I'm aligned correctly. If I'm uh, missing putts, I know that it's usually because of my path. Um, so, it, it, and I know that because of being in the studio and seeing the videos and knowing like my tendencies. So I, I work a lot on, 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 you know, the setup stuff. And then after that, for the most part, like I said, I'll use a putting arc here and there to make sure that my path doesn't feel too funky. But, you know, for the most part, it turns, it, it comes down to, you know, setup eyes and, um, you know, then just practicing here and there to get the feel for putts, you know, you have to have good speed on the greens to make putts. Uh, that's the most, uh, I think, overlooked thing in putting. Uh, and fortunately, you know, that that's something that I have the time to practice and uh, perfect after, you know, working on the important stuff like this setup, the fundamental stuff. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's all worked out for you now. And I'm sure it's kind of, uh, like you said, you, you've developed a system. Um, and I'm sure you developed it over time, you know, with junior career and uh, amateur and early pro, all that stuff. So let's kind of take it back to when you were a junior or even as a child um, and some influences there. Obviously, Scotty Cameron had a huge impact on our generation when we were growing up. Um, everyone wanted a terrillium or, um, you know, a, a tiger putter or anything like that. Um, Fan question asks, W-A-S-M-D, what was your first Scotty Cameron putter then? And, and kind of tell us about that. I remember, yeah, I remember my exact first one. Um, I had always wanted a Terillium. Actually, I always wanted a Scotty Cameron, but I always wanted a Terillium. Like you mentioned perfectly, a, a Tiger putter at, at the time for me, you know, growing up, seeing that. And I, I would look on um, on eBay all the time, and they were just too expensive. And, and not, you know, there are few and far between and I remember one day I woke up and my dad uh, woke, you know, kind of surprised me and had gotten me. This is like five years into this process. Finally, I think I was 14 or 15. He got me a, a Trillium, and I'll never forget it because I, I still have it. I actually ended up going bringing it to Scotty so they could stamp my name on it and just make it mine. But that was my first one. I loved it, and I just remember one of the first days. I one of the yeah the first college. To, or a high school tournament I played with that I won it and I might have either been my first win or one of uh, the first ones and I just remember thinking this thing is magical uh, a lot of it was <laughs> in my head but man that was that was my favorite I always used to be a big blade guy um, I just recently switched last year to a mallet but uh, the blades you know growing up I it, probably a lot of it was tiger but um, yeah between the terillium and then all the new ports to me I, I became kind of um, kind of you know obsessed with just the look of uh you know of the blade scotty camera it was like the classiest thing you could possibly have i thought yeah I, and i like i said i think that was our generation that fell in love with that type of stuff um every kid wanted to have that little red cherry bomb in the back of their <laughs> yeah. putter and on the face and we we're like how do we get that uh justin thomas and i we talked about this on the i think the first inside the circle tee that we did and both of us i didn't even know he did this but I drew in red Sharpie next to the to Titleist in the back pocket. <laughs> same thing. And then I had him send pictures of his first putter because he still had it. And uh, and we put it on the, the episode. And, <laughs> wow. and he, he had done the exact same thing back then. And it was faded out. But it was just like, 
all the all the kids like or everyone our age they wanted that type of putter and and scotty you know made custom stuff like that uh, i mean he had a huge impact on the industry and changed the putter world as far as like customization and putting the the coolest stuff that everybody wanted on on putters and especially yeah. blade yeah absolutely you mentioned that you brought that one or that first putter into the the studio to get stamped also uh what was your or when was the first time that you came into the studio and and was that the first time you got a circle t as well or i think yeah i think so i went into the studio i think after my after or in my sophomore year in college for the first time um and, and i went in to to like look at putters basically and then when i after 10 minutes, I realized I, I was going to learn a lot more about my putting stroke and putting than just getting a, a sweet new putter. Uh, you know, Paul and I become friendly because of, like our first encounter, he was so gracious with his time and he was so helpful. And again, like I, I mentioned before, it really grew into teaching me a lot about basically all I know about putting or at least the process I use to, to improve as a putter. Um, but yeah, that was the first time I got this, the uh, Circle T. Uh, it was awesome. Um, you know, I, I, I have a few of my putters at my house here and I have a few like my Terillium is, is at a is in a safer place than my house. I don't want to mess around with it too much because I, I use it over and over again. Um, but, yeah, I have a few there and that's one of them. My first one's one of them. The Terillium is one of them that I keep somewhere else. Um, and, yeah, it was just like it was a cool experience. It's kind of the, the um, allure of Scotty Cameron is is so big in junior golf. You don't really know. Um, you know what the studio looks like you've heard some people have gone some people haven't uh you know that they have a you know factory you could do whatever you want to the putters and i didn't never really knew what i was getting into when i got there it was like disneyland uh for a golfer for a kid golfer so it was awesome but yeah that was my first circle t um kind of you know started the wave of uh, i don't switch putters very much but paul would let me get a putter here and there just that just to make a new one <laughs> so yeah. i could uh, yeah. i could have one in my in my in my uh, golf bag here and there you you have one of those at least one of those with you right now don't you maybe yeah. a, a one that you want to show yeah i got this this one was the i think this is one of the ones i got right after college so i um i, I he let you know he gave me just basically a slab uh, or a piece of paper that was just gonna be a slab of metal and said do as you please so i had just graduated from cal um and so I did the cow colors, uh, you know, my, some of my buddies, at, I won the national championship. So a couple of my buddies, including my now caddy Joe used to call me or call me champ. So I put that on the bumper. Um, uh, and that, that was a cool one. Cause that, that one I used for a while, um, honestly, until Kelly Moser, uh, who, who used to work at Scotty Cameron jumped in and, and, and sent me a, a different one that it's probably my favorite one I've got as far as the design. And it's of course the one I didn't design. So <laughs> that shows me what I know about designing putters. Uh, but yeah, th that one was a cool one just because it was the, I felt like it was the first time I designed like everything. Like it was just like here, right. do what you want. Instead of like, what do you want? Do you want your name down here? And, and this one, it was like, whatever you want to do, just do it, put it on this putter. Maybe you feel like tiger, I guess. Uh, like you guys are saying without the Sharpie, like it was real. It was legit. Yeah. Um, I guess, that's part of like, uh, you know, you, you practice golf all day and we design putters all day. So, um, like you, you probably don't even know half of the stamps that are able to be put on. Oh yeah. On, uh, and, and, you know, I've been with the company and with Scotty Cameron for a number of years here and every, every now and then I'll see, um, you know, something from our studio. I get sent a picture and I'm like, well, I've never seen that stamp before or something like that. So, you know, there, I'm sure there's plenty of stamps that, uh, you know that we haven't seen that you definitely haven't seen so when you start designing your own thing you're like well i didn't know i could have that or i, could, exactly. I didn't know i could do that so exactly. um, what do you have the one that kelly moser gave yeah. you there or let's let's see that one since that's your favorite one that's ever been uh been designed um and so you got this in college no, it was after college. I, I messaged him and I said, yo, like, uh, I, I want to come. I, I was thinking about coming to the studio because I want to try out a new putter. And without even, like, discussing or anything, he sent me a putter and said, I think you're going to like this one. Like, basically, <laughs> just give it a shot because he knows what I like. I like when I was putting with a blade, I like really square lines. And then, but it's my favorite putter because it looks sick, but 
It also has like it going back to the uh, the stamps like that I didn't know existed. Like that's yep. those are three of them, and I was like, dang, that's so cool. It was so clean. I had never seen stuff like that before. The the dancing Scotties on the back with the you know the the jesters. I like that. Um, so that was the coolest design. I saw that and I said, I don't need to come in anymore, man. I'm good. This is I've got with that for a very 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 long time. When uh, my my caddy Joe was staying with me for the waste management, I've been playing great with the one I have now. And uh, he was like um, he was like. Uh, who watched me putt in the house here and there, and I would always putt with the one I just showed you. And he said, you gotta put that thing down because you're gonna start using it again pretty soon. And I was like, I just love it. I like looking at it. I like putting with it. But for whatever reason, I putt better with this other one. Yeah, I, and I remember, I mean, the times that I think we've maybe played once or twice and just all the other times I've seen you, um, you've always had that blade right there yeah, in the exactly. bag. I mean, ever since ever since I've really known you, so. Um, like you said earlier, you don't switch a whole lot, but, uh, you know, when you're, you kind of have the decorated career you had in college, uh, and, and whatnot and getting out on tour right away, you kind of get cool things like that. Yeah. So. You get some cool stuff. I, I switched out, you know, here or there, but you always find the one, I think Tiger said it so amazingly with the putter. He, you know, everyone he's famous for that, you know, people would try to make him the same exact thing. And it's just one of them feels the, the one he has feels the best. Um, and it makes no sense, uh, but that's the craziness, I guess, of golf. And that's how it would be with me. I get a new one. I'd either like to look better or something. And I, like, again, I wouldn't change very often. I would realize it, you know, the one I had before felt better or whatever it might be. Um, that's why, you know, that I put with a mallet now, uh, and I never put with a mallet in my life. And, um, to be honest, when I first started putting with it, you sent me two to try, and it was right before the Waste Management Monday qualifier, like a year and a half ago, and I remember I was putting with them, and I was like, man, these just feel, they don't look good. They feel good, they don't look good, and I couldn't get over the look, and then as I just spent more and more time putting with it, I started to like love, or I got used to the look and started to like the look a lot more, and then obviously the results like spoke for themselves, but um they uh that that's just the most interesting part about putt it, putters and putting to me is that uh there's so much that goes in, into how you're going to appreciate a putter like if i would have just taken that for a day I, I don't think i would have rocked the mallet for that long just because my eyes were so used to a small head um and now all of a sudden when i putt with anything else other than my mallet it feels really weird so it just right. kind of, that all happened so quickly yeah so that was kind of you know next on the list here i was going to talk a little bit about your your pro career and and we can jump ahead here and um you know i, I had the, the exact same thing i was going to say you don't switch putters much but right around the waste management in 2019 you made that putter switch uh we had a couple fan questions about that um when sanity asks why the futura yeah so basically um i had played uh you know a couple months or so uh, of the season and I felt like I was rolling the ball really nicely like it just was hitting my lines um, and, and and the ball was not going in uh, I remember specifically Palm Springs I hit the edge on like just what felt like dozens of, of uh, like 15 20 footers and I, I put it and which is which is kind of been a staple of my career like as a professional i put it very well inside of six to eight feet and i've always had this little gap in the putting between 10 and 20 feet and then after 20 feet i put okay again too so it's been like this weird balance of i know the ball must be rolling okay but however i'm not making a lot of the birdie putts from 10 to 15 feet 10 to 20 feet i make a lot of the par putts from inside six feet you don't have a lot of birdie putts from inside of six feet so i just didn't feel like i was getting a lot out of it i had always, like I said, I, I mean, I, I have four or five putters, but I don't switch with them much. I've used them all for a long time for the most part. And I had never used a, a mallet and I had messaged you uh, that I was, I wanted to try just a few and see what, what I, you know, liked. And you sent me three models. I said, I wanted the, the one I have now. I said, I wanted that one. You said, I'm going to send you a couple more. And I, as like the days went on, I would break them down. I put with them for a ton. And then I'd find the one that first of all, I liked the look up best and then I would put with that for a while and see if it had the same results and basically it came down to the the one I have the future it, it was very square but the whole reason I did it and the reason I fell in love with it is 
that gap between 10 and 20 feet, I realized a lot of it was just speed. Like if my speed could just be a little bit more consistent, I would be, uh, I would make a lot more of those putts and w without compromising my six footers or whatever. So um, basically I noticed that this, it might, it might've been the weight of it. It might've been the way it swung. It felt like it was very low to the ground. I'm not really sure uh, exactly what it ended up being, but it was a, a couple things that basically made me feel comfortable about the speed of the greens um wherever i went um, i felt like i had very good touch with this putter whereas maybe the this you know the blade blade head uh whether you know it be a 009 or a right you know just like the regular newport like whatever it may be I, I felt like it was um maybe just a little less consistent more toe swing obviously with a smaller smaller head and for for me like i it was i literally went to that monday qualifier uh, for the waste management, I got through, I shot, you know, seven under, and then I, I started playing great golf after that. And um, I haven't had like a, a real uh, down fall to putting for even, or a slump to putting even for a little bit yet. Um, obviously, some weeks are better than others, but uh, this 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 putter, man, I, like I said, I would have never, ever imagined I'd be putting with a big putter if you told me this like five years ago. And now, you know, it would be hard to imagine switching this. I think I even texted you not that long ago when you guys made the Terillium. I said, I might want that Terillium, uh, but if I ever switch from this putter, you, like I give you permission to punch me in the face. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember it. I actually <laughs> forgot about that until right now. But um, yeah, I think that it, it's, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but that's kind of how golf goes. Like um, you find something that you aren't expecting and it just kind of clicks sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I, and I honestly, I feel like I'm having deja vu because I've had this same conversation <laughs> with Justin again. I, I brought him, you know, we on this, on this same thing inside the Circle T, he kind of talked about how, he was always a Newport or, or Newport 2 user, and he was going through a little slump, and things just weren't going in. And and basically, you guys are still you guys are using the same exact putter, and it just clicked, and you guys played well, and and have been using it ever since. So it's interesting how sometimes that happens, and and you just run with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Obviously, you got you. You said you switched to that at the waste management. Got through, played well. Later that year in uh, May, I believe, you got your first PGA Tour victory at the Wells Fargo. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, obviously an awesome week. I've been playing quite well. Um, and, I mean, we actually made one change in the – well, not with the putter, but I, I started putting that week without a line, without using a line on the ball. Um, I don't even do that now, but – Joe had been begging me to try it for like a little bit. And finally, um, you know, I did and I put it out of my mind. Uh, but again, it went back to the to the putter. Um, even when I look at myself putt with it and uh, like uh, when I when I watched the, the coverage, it looked really natural. And I could tell even just the way that the putter was swinging that I had a lot of control of the speed and the pace of it. And I think that's why I fell in love with this putter. Uh, because I did feel the command of that. Um, like I said, it, it was either the way that it, it swung because of the shape of the head or how it sat a little lower to the ground, or it was just the general weight that I had never really used before. Um, but, um, you know, I could just see that the, the way it was swinging and the way I could see it on TV, I, I thought that that's how it felt to me, and that's always good when those things line up. Um, and, yeah, I mean, my speed was unbelievable. I, I putt it so, so well. I, I don't know if I've ever putt even half as good as that in my life. So uh, that was a that was a fun one, um, obviously to to get your first win at a golf course you you both love and, and has a you know a great field and a great list of past champions uh, was awesome. Um, but that that was that was one of those. If I could putt like that a little more often, I think I'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everybody would. Uh, Ori twenty twenty asked, how did you control your nerves during your PGA Tour win? Yeah, um, I talk about this qu quite a bit, honestly. Um, nerves are nerves that can be taken two different ways. Uh, you could look at it positively. You could look at it negatively. I have always, and I think everyone who plays this game professionally, look at it positively. If you're nervous, especially on a Sunday um, with the lead, that means that you're playing well and you're putting well and things are going great. So you should look at it as this is a good thing that I'm nervous because it means that I'm playing so well that I should be super ultra confident. 
Um, so on that Sunday, it was just anytime I was nervous, I, I first off reminded myself I love being nervous. You know, I, when you're not nervous in professional golf for a long time, that means you haven't done anything in your, you know, with, with your with your golf career. And that's obviously a, a, a negative and that's that would be sad. So I try to keep reminding myself this is awesome. Uh, if I'm nervous at other times, um, again, it just goes to like, would you rather play this game and not have any nerves? Because I just don't know the point. I, I mean, if I play, if I play yahtzee and i have the last roll to win i'm going to be a little nervous because i want to win so that's why everyone plays golf or basketball or whatever you might play cards like that's why you play to get a little rush so you should if you look at it and and tell yourself to embrace it and that this is a good thing it it takes away all of the the negatives now you're still going to be nervous i had jelly legs and like you know all that but i felt like i was really controlling my breathing and and that would help me control like my hands and uh, in your in your putting, you don't really need your legs. So if you keep them real still, it's good. Uh, so I just I, I tried I tried to think of that. But if you're if you're struggling with with the actual shaking and this and that, it's just breathing. It's just controlling your your heart rate and your breath a little bit. Um, but if you're struggling with the mental side of actually being nervous, it just to embrace being nervous. I think it's awesome. I, I, I hope I haven't been nervous for a while with this COVID going on in the in the quarantine. So I can't wait to be nervous on Thursday next week. Yeah. And I know everybody's looking forward to being back out there. Uh, will be interesting to see uh, kind of how everything goes the first week. But I know you're excited. I'm excited to uh, be back out there. And I think it'll be a good thing. So um, another fan question, Matt Dawson, 513, said, outside of the win at Wells Fargo, uh, what are you most proud of? Uh, what am I most proud of? It's uh, a deep one, so. Yeah, that's a deep one. Uh, well, I, I think for me, my career in 2017 hit a, it hit uh, like eight brick walls in a row. Uh, so I, I, I even to this day, I'm not quite sure how I continue to believe in myself that I could uh, not only you know get back to the PJ Tour but also win. Um, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, I, I remember you know I think I made two cuts and 17 tries on tour. Uh, which isn't good for everybody wondering. That's bad math. Um, and yeah, so that that stunk. But I was very proud of my. I kept a very positive attitude. I kept a lot of belief in myself when I would say all, but maybe like three people on this planet had uh, that faith. Uh, so I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm more proud of that than winning. I mean, winning was awesome, and 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 I hope to do it many more times. But um, like I said before, with the nerves, it's a lot easier to uh, embrace the nerves when you're playing well. When I was playing bad, I'd be nervous just to go out there and see, to see what could happen. And that was a tough fight uh, with, with my own brain that I felt like I won over time. So uh, that, that was a much you know, more important accomplishment, just not something that'll come up as much um, you know, on like my bio. Uh, it's not like you're going to write, you know, didn't completely quit golf on the bio. So uh, I, I was pretty stoked on that one. I, I'm glad to still be playing golf after a pretty, pretty bad, bad season right around the time where we were becoming friends kind of when you were going through all that. And I knew it was a tough time on you. You kind of bounced back and forth between PJ tour and, and now corn Ferry tour. You won twice on the corn Ferry tour during that time. So it wasn't all bad in there. Divot makers asked, what is the best advice that you have been given for your mental approach? Yeah. Um, yeah. The bounce back was interesting because I thought the first year I lost my tour card, it felt like it was just the rookie learning curve. Like I just felt like I, I, I things went too fast. I, I didn't do the right stuff. I lost who I was. And then the second time I lost my card, even though I got it back, like I kept getting it back because I felt like, uh, it, again, this goes to the mental. And, and I guess I'll, 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 I'll start with that. I remember I lost the card my se the second time when it was really bad. This is when the golf game itself was was not good. Um, I, I, I won the year prior with a bad golf game, and I guess maybe that's a testament to I could use other parts of my game to, to win or to, to succeed. But, um, you know, also I, I maybe had a great week with the stuff I was struggling with. Who, like, I don't know. I, it's amazing that I won. It feels kind of like a freak uh, incident at that time. But I remember I came back after losing my car for the second time and, and really, you know, struggling with my golf game. And Charlie Hoffman mentioned to me, uh, you know, what do you think it is? Like, it seems like you, when you get to the corn f or the then web now corn ferry tour, you feel like a big fish in a small pond. Uh, yet when you come to the PJ tour, you really struggle. Um, I, he's like, I, I bet, you know, I think that it's, you feel too small in, in a, in a big, you know, in a big pond. And I was like, 
you know what, you know, I was thinking about it for a while and I started to approach to, to this question about the mental game. I started to approach things differently. I really started to become, I had to get off there, no doubt. This is not like just a straight up mental thing, but I did start to walk onto ranges and try to fake the fact that I still felt like a big fish, even if the biggest fish were sitting next to me, like the biggest cat is sitting like right next to me hitting balls. Like it was it was hard. It was hard to do that, but I had to start. I had to, and it's something I still work on and and and, and try to deal with. It's something that I'm so impressed with a lot of these players that they do. Uh, but I remember, you know, this year as I got to to the West Coast and I started to play better, I was still trying to fake that in my head. But it slowly started to become a lot more real to me, where I would walk onto the range on Thursday and would feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel like I'm looking around at Rory and Justin and and Tiger and Brooks and all the guys and being like, look at like I, would, it was more like, there's you know there's Justin Brooks, uh, Rory, Tiger. Like instead of just like wondering what they're doing or, or gawking at what they're doing, it's like man, maybe what I'm doing is pretty good. And again, it, it goes back to just what Charlie said, and it was a mental approach. Like I had to trick myself into believing that, um, whether it's right or wrong, I, you still have to trick yourself. And I I thought I did, and then you slowly start to believe it as the results kind of move on. And I'm still gonna have to go through that. Uh, you know, that process of, of trying to continue to be my, my biggest fan and, and trying to think that I'm, you know, the best one out there. But that's that's the best approach, I think. I mean, whether it's true or false, uh, I'm just going to keep trying to tell myself to be a little delusional at times and just try and believe that, I, you know, once I get there, that I'm one of the one of the best players on the on the range before the week and then play like that, you know, Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. And I think that would be great advice for, you know, really anyone, uh, whether it's a junior golfer, uh, college amateur golfer, or, uh, you know, anyone that's in the pro ranks as well. I mean, um, yeah, so. the, to the, kid, yeah, the junior golf too. like it, if you see if the junior golfer were to ever play with me, I will most likely hopefully beat that junior golfer. But in no way should that junior golfer come into a match with me and think, all right, well, he's just going to win today. Like he like you still have to have that fire. That's what I'm so impressed with. People like Justin Thomas is he, he has that fire chip on his shoulder. Like I'll be anybody any day of the week, like bring it. And that's what I've been trying to instill in myself. So to the junior golfers, it's like it, it just having that mindset all the time like anywhere you go whether because you're gonna have to make a jump from junior golf to college golf and that's a big jump but you need to continue to remember the same stuff and then you're gonna make that jump to professional golf and then you're gonna make it to the pj tour like these things will feel foreign but if you can keep that kind of like the swagger of it going i really think that helps because i had that a lot and then it's like the first year i got the pj tour i lost the swag like i started to like kind of be a shell of myself because i i'd seen all these people on tv before and it was just so dumb because i'd gotten somewhere uh, in my career, that that's the pinnacle of my, you know, my sport. I made it to the PGA Tour. Yet all of a sudden, I make it there, and I and I start to think to myself, Are you really like ready for this? And it's like, Well, I'm here, aren't I? Like, like why don't we just act like we're ready for it and then see what happens? And, and I, I hope that the kids growing up and even the people, you know, just playing professional golf now, believe in themselves the most. Because if 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 you're not gonna be, if you're not gonna believe in yourself and you're not gonna be your biggest fan, who is? Like, who who's really gonna believe in you? It has to start with you. Um, and, and I hope yeah. everybody does try to do that because that's that helped me a lot. I mean, I, I was not my biggest fan for a f- you know a few years, and as I become, as I started to think more highly of myself, um, my golf game has gotten quite a bit better. So we got a couple other fan questions here that I want to kind of finish it off. They're a little random here, but um, but then uh, we'll jump into a little rapid fire here. You'll be on the hot seat. So, All right. uh, Forty-seven Jamer asks. Uh, if you could design a head cover, what would be on it? Uh, well, I have my my favorite head cover now. All it's missing is a little bit, but I would design basically the same as Scotty Cameron did. I do uh, the Circle T uh, head cover. Can we see with it? The, per, yeah, with the purple and gold, and I put a bunch of twenty fours and eights all over it for Kobe Bryant. I got this from you, Depot, and I appreciate it because I don't. I will. I will just keep running this one back. Um, so I just put a bunch of 24s and 8s all over it uh, for, for for Mr. Kobe Bryant. Um, uh, I love this thing. Uh, I'm a huge Laker fan. Uh, I like to look at that head cover every time. I think I'm going to wear it down to where it's just white at some point because uh, of the sun beating down on it. So that's what I would do to, to one if I had to do one right now. Yeah, well, and we won't let it go white. I'll, I'll give you another one. If, uh, <laughs> I'll give you another one if it's starting to look uh, a little ratty there. Um, B Jesse 01 asks, what is your favorite course to play on tour? 
Uh, Riviera is my favorite. Um, I, I grew up going there to the tournament, uh, being from someone from South, Southern California. Um, so it obviously has an a important part of, of, of my golf history involved, but it's also, I, I think the golf course is as good as it gets. It's my favorite layout. Um, it's cool being in, in LA and all, but the actual golf course is, is as good as it gets. Um, not really much OB, no real water hazard. Um, you got the coolest designs. It's hard when it's soft and it's hard when it's firm. Um, I think it always plays great. It always has a great field, but just playing that golf course, walking on the same grounds as so many great players, uh, and then testing your game against a golf course that again, tells you, Hey, hit it here, man. Like, let's see how you can do. And it beats you most, most times. I think that's, uh, that that's what makes it, you know, my favorite to play. And I look forward to playing there uh, every year. It's always circled on my calendar calendar. Yeah, that's uh, honestly one of my favorite stops to be at and, and work that event just because, you know, it's it's such a great golf course and I enjoy watching everybody play after. I usually, that's one of the few weeks that, you know, I'm there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to help you guys out. And, uh, you know, I, I try and stay around uh, for the for the rest of the week and, and kind of watch you guys. <laughs> Sugar, sugarfish. Yeah, you can't you can't miss out on sugarfish either. Always a, a staple when you're in Santa Monica as well. So, exactly. Um, call underscore make you ask uh, from Santa Cl- Clarita. Myself, born and raised. Favorite restaurant. Oh, there. that's awesome. Um, I don't know about my favorite restaurant. For the people who are from Valencia, there's a little spot called Hungry Ninja, and it just does chicken and rice bowls or shrimp and rice bowls and. I don't know why it's so good, but it is. I'm a simple man. Um, it's a lot of food. Uh, also, the, my favorite pizza place in Santa Clarita is called Toppers. Uh, we go there quite often, but um, you know they got it all in Valencia. Uh, but those two, those two, if I go home to visit my mom and sister, I will go there every single time. <laughs> Let's put Max Homa on the hot seat here. It's hot in Arizona, so it's going to be hard to make this seat a whole lot warmer. Favorite sports movie? Uh, remember the Titans. That's a good one. Greatest moment as a golf fan? Oh, mama. You know what? It was watching Tiger win the 2019 Masters at my house. I wasn't there, but it was at my house. And I felt like a, I felt like a fan and like a seven-year-old all over again. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think anybody that follows you on social media knows that you're, uh, you're a big tiger. He's a, he's, he's a main, he's the biggest part of this sport and for good reason. Yeah. Funniest golfer on tour. Um, Eddie Pepperell is hilarious, uh, as is Harold Varner. So I'm going to toss it up between them two. Harold Varner's three for three on this question right now. <laughs> I, just, just, just he's letting you know. reason for it. <laughs> Man. All right. Um, Masters or U.S. Open win? Oh, God, I hate this question. Uh, I'll probably say the Masters. I'll take either if anyone's offering. Yeah. Uh, Name a non-golfer you want to play with. Ooh, um, Cody Bellinger's been playing a lot of golf here in Arizona. I haven't gotten to play golf with him, so that'd be cool. All right, all right. He's, He's a Dodger, isn't he? He's a Dodger. Yeah, there you go. Um, if you weren't playing golf, what sport would you be playing? Uh, I'd be the water boy for the basketball team, any team that would take me. I love basketball. Um, you know, I, 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 w- I wish I would have given baseball a longer shot because uh, it doesn't matter if I'm six foot six or my height. So, uh, but yeah, I don't think I could play another sport. I'm not that. I'm not that gifted. There's people who are, and, and I am. I am not Steph Curry. I, I have. I have one thing I'm decent at, and I'm gonna just hold on to it. <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. Um, what album slash music are you listening to right now? Uh, I listen to mostly podcasts, uh, especially when I practice. So I haven't really got a new album. I feel like there hasn't been good music out uh, in quite some time. But I, I listen to uh, to a lot of J. Cole. He's my favorite. 2014 uh, Forest Hill Drive uh, is like one of my favorite, um, favorite albums. So... Uh, I think like I just I keep did I say the name wrong? Is it 2014? Uh oh man, it's something like that. It's something. I, yeah, it's something I don't. Like I think it came out in 2014. Yeah, okay. maybe I don't know. I, 
I think, I think it's just four still, still drive. Uh, but that's my favorite. So I'll listen to that even though it's old. Um, but yeah, I just I listen to the radio or my random uh, what you want to call it, like playlists that pop up on my phone. Okay. All right. Um, Jordan or LeBron? I mean, what, what, <laughs> it's a loaded question. What are we getting at? Like, is is it who do I think is the best ever? I don't know. Just Jordan or LeBron? Who you I, I, I pick Jordan, but I, I love LeBron. I'm not. I'm not one of these people that. Uh, I think it's. I think it's not black and white. Who is the goat? Quote unquote. I think they're both unbelievable. Um, so, but after watching the Last Dance, it's hard to. It's hard to. It's hard to argue against Michael Jordan being like the most fun basketball player I've, I've really ever watched. I mean, we can get way deep in the weeds on this, but I think uh, my buddy said it best. I think LeBron is probably the best overall basketball player to ever play, and I appreciate that. And I think Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player to ever play. I know that it's a small uh, difference, but I think it's very hard to argue uh, one against the other. Um, and it also is a waste of time because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, very, very true. All right. Um, texting or talking? Uh, <laughs> texting, probably. <laughs> okay. Lowest score ever? Um, I grew up on a par 61, so it's kind of cheating, but I've shot 55 before. <laughs> that doesn't count. Let's go to norm- a normal course. I shot a, I shot a, six, I shot a 60 once at uh, Valencia Country Club. Okay. All right. How many course records do you have? Uh, I think I have... I have one I know for sure at LA Country Club. Um, I think I have one or two more, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't. I fortunately don't keep up with any except for that one in LA. That one means means a lot to me. I, I had one up until this point. It just got broke last week by my by my best friend from my hometown. He shot 59. So I'm a little like. Well, uh, your ex your ex best friend. He's not your best friend anymore. No, nah, I, I I didn't even tell him congrats. <laughs> Did you have a sixty? You have sixty before that. Uh, I had sixty-one. He beat Dang, it by two. He beat it by two. My gosh, good for I him. Know. I know. Dang. Um, last one. Favorite show on Netflix. Uh, is The Office still on Netflix? It is. It's The Office. If not, uh, man, I was deep into Ozark. I th- thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Office is my favorite. Ozark's another one up there for me. So, all right, you are officially off the hot seat. Uh, feeling all right? Uh, feeling thanks all right. so much for thanks so much for joining us here on uh, Inside the Circle T. Uh, like we mentioned before, I know you're excited to get back out there next week for the first PGA Tour event. I am as well, and uh, looking forward to seeing you out there. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Deepod. Thanks to Scotty Cameron for doing all that they do. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody, whether it's on person or through a a TV lens. So, um, you know, everybody, hope everybody's staying safe. And again, thank you.